just uh, trying to be controversial yeah. and uh, <laughs> if it doesn't work, then we can just uh, go and have a beer maybe. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I think the biggest thing that we can do, and we've already done it by being here, is just linking up. And now we have all these projects that maybe some of us have heard of each other, maybe some haven't. And let's start working together, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The show of love. <laughs> well, one of the things that I contemplate the most is uh, how to create a fun production of uh, necessary things. And of course, self-sustainability uh, is, uh, is a great thing, but I'm also thinking that in terms of developing the movement, uh, uh, ways of, of, of producing the things that we use, that other people <coughs> use, if, if we as an autonomous want to exit the system that is a capitalist system, and we want to get rid of that currency that is in there, we have to, uh, I mean, at least the way I think about it is that we need to build a network of, of production that is based in, in those principles, that is uh, that they can do those things, the basic things, like for instance, if we want to build a house in an uh, 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 autonomous uh, organization, we need bricks, and somebody needs to, to make those bricks. I make them for you, I'm a construction architect. So do it. <laughs> but wooden bricks, so. Yeah. Okay, uh, but, uh, but that's exactly the kind of thing that I'm thinking of, and I think that we, that we need a lot of those initiatives and those kind of cooperatives that can do those things, and then uh, the next step will be, as you mentioned before, then there will be some interdependence because we'll have to kind of rely on a little bit of each other, I think, um, those various production sites. Um, but I think at least that's, for me, one of the big things, one of the big steps for an autonomous movement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I totally agree with the first two points, but I think another crucial point to improve the movement is to, I mean, target sounds a bit radical, but to target <laughs> uh, with our movement uh, those completely not interested. And I mentioned briefly before, so target people who, you know, right wing or like people who are very national or patriotic or whatever. So to, to strategically go after them, religious people if necessary. So uh, whoever is not in your movement, <laughs> uh, volunteer and against it, maybe yeah, politicians, uh, state members, just target them, you know, like invite them, make them part of it, one way or another. Use Christian, and then to build on that, I just think one of the biggest barriers in this uh, is how uh, transparency, or this transparency, mm -hmm. especially with autonomous uh, initiatives from a, like a mainstream or like a everyday, I, I don't know, everyday Dane, like we used to say, uh, I don't know, half or Jensen. Uh, Transparency is really important because if you look at, for instance, I mean, just to see who's this coming from, to see what are the ideas, who are the people who's actually doing these things. These these things can really tr create a trust in an autonomous in, uh, initiative. Uh, and the opposite also, I mean, transparency with the things that are already in the big kind of systems and government stuff. You know, it, you know, all these TTIP, all these uh, trading agreements that are going on is very very. This transparent, or how to yeah. say, like not yeah. transparent. If you could actually read who's the people behind this, yeah. mm -hmm. what are their aims, mm. then you could you can have a m much more open, transparent um, conversation about it. And the same thing, I think, applies, for instance, to this place. We had a lot of trouble in the beginning being misunderstood in mm. 117 ways yeah. uh, until we actually start to tell about okay, what are some of the stories here? What are, what what is our motivation? What is it we really dream about? And then it's much more easy to connect with those those principles. So something about transparency to see what's actually, yeah. who are the people who's like the, I think that's where we can hold it. <laughs> better telling those things. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. We should be very uh, uh, inviting to everyone, uh, <coughs> including the people who believe, uh, religious beliefs, like Mass, mass media beliefs, no, mass, mass beliefs, because they, I think they represent 80% of the world population also. <laughs> uh, I mean, the atheists, I don't know how many, we, how many percentage uh, yeah, they represent. But, and I think it's possible to reach uh, people <coughs> in many aspects uh, without using force and violence, like the establishment uh, yeah, usually promotes, but by using uh, words <coughs> eventually. Uh, what I've done in my own experience is to actually yeah, tell people 
you know, I think it's great. Uh, it's a very good idea you have, like when you see uh, the yeah, um, Jehovah Witnesses or uh, the Mormons or uh, yeah, people standing on the streets, like yeah, they want to be yeah, to, to be heard and to be listened to. So you can come to them and then you can say, I think your ideas are great. And they're like, well, for once somebody is actually supporting. But it's not radical enough. And then they're like, really? And then they start to listen. And there you can fire up. Uh, you can quote the Bible and say, you know, in the Bible, for instance, it says, <laughs> you should always welcome the poor in your temple. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, but I don't, take, I don't think it's, uh, yeah, it's true. I think we can face out poverty. Uh, and so, yeah. I, or you can say, uh, uh, we shall do on, uh, on earth like it is on heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but do you think there is banks? up in uh, heaven and God has a bank? <laughs> or is he getting ruled by the bankers like in here? Uh, so, so that's uh, maybe a way to... Just to uh, yeah. quick, there is an article called Where Were Jesus Bank? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I would like to say what the two of you have said um, and what we talked about with Dad, which the guy from Barcelona on the Skype conversation, and that was the power in networks. Um, and that's like what a lot of kind of postmodern theory also says is that we're like coming, approaching this network society. And I think that if we're asking ourselves like how we can stay connected and how we can like build like a, you know, a viable front against this oncoming right, rise of the right, um, it is I think through nurturing our networks. Um, and what you're saying also is awesome I think when, and which goes into your thing that we should bring all people to the movement is this thing of like, speaking the language of people that you approach, like that aren't maybe in the leftist or activist scenes. Um, in my experience, when I've talked about refugees or the refugee situation in the US, for example, I talked to this senior home. There was like 80 people there from like all walks of senior life, but like from all backgrounds, I mean. Um, and like they were like, you know, so they were like watching all this refugee stuff on the news and what was happening in Europe. And this sounds really like banal, but like my most gripping argument at the end of the talk would always be like, but imagine what awesome food we're gonna have in Germany in five years. I was like, we're gonna have the best Syrian restaurants ever. I was like, before the Italians came, everyone in Germany was just eating schnitzels and potatoes. I was like, now we have like pizzerias and like you can get the best kebab in Berlin, you know? Like, it's like really basic. I, but it's like this language that everyone understands and it's like this language of kind of diversity and tolerance also we were like, yeah, you know, Chinese food is awesome, or like, whatever, <laughs> or, or Cuban food, or, and, That's awesome. yeah, and it, and it really Luka. works, yeah, and it works with people, like, it really gets them, and they're like, you know, that's not that bad, so, I think that sometimes, if we do want to, like, nurture people, getting people in the movement who are not in this milieu, like, it's really important to just, just lay it down, you know, just basics, you know? Yeah, and I think that maybe we should also have like a listserv or something after this conference is over because there's really interesting people who are here um, and then we can all stay connected. That could be like step one in the network. Um, we could be like a towards autonomy network. Oh, <laughs> You also, all of you, go to, to similar events. I don't know how hard it has, it has been to organize this, Galau. Uh, okay. I don't know how hard it has been to organize this, but I know like we have been to, uh, I really like name that to that unusual suspects festival when you should invite people who are not politicians, who are not policy makers, maybe sometimes to meet those who are, and like you, you have been to that uh, alternative cultural center, redneck thing in, in Verona. I think we'll see more of this in the future, and then yeah. sort of the, because we are really, yeah, if you look at the, 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 the people, oh, the people, <coughs> can organize themselves into maybe new different networks that are alternatives themselves to systems. Right there. So, yeah, stay in contact for sure. And come to ours next year. Yeah, yeah. 2017. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, September. <laughs> Did you, didn't you raise your hand also? You wanted to say something? No? Mm. Just I'm interested in, in the woofing people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Come to my cricket. I agree with your point that um, if you can, you know, you, you have this saying, uh, if you can, you talk to people's hearts too, they're stomach. Yeah. So yeah. if you can convince them by you know, talking to their stomach, you can you know, get them to get their hearts as well. Yeah. <laughs> so you're on the men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's just a I can I can add that the, the fellow that we one of the fellows that we just picked up vegetables from uh, thought that Trump was going to be a really thought a couple of months ago that Trump was going to be really great for the United States, um, but he's giving us vegetables for our our uh, people's kitchen tomorrow, and it doesn't really matter that we maybe have different political ideas than he does. Uh, it, we, he's still happy to give us vegetables. <laughs> sure. yeah, that's <laughs> we're, we're reuniting despite this, maybe, uh, some, despite the fact that we could have had a longer conversation that we would have disagreed. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, uh, there's a moment of connection that it doesn't matter. Just curious if anyone's tried Syrian food. <laughs> Yay. Yeah? Yeah. Is it good? Uh, no. <laughs> it's delicious. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, the bakery, um, uh, actually, we made agreements with in Copenhagen. Uh, they said, okay, Francois, I think it's good what you do, and you give food to the homeless and the paperless and the, um, yeah, uh, jobless. Uh, and all the activists uh, help, helping. Yeah, it's all about the less. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, yeah. Uh, at, at, uh, Boulevard, yeah. yeah Boulevard. Yes, they have hired uh, or employed a Syrian refugee. Bam, yeah, super cool. Was, uh, cool. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm glad to hear. Uh, a very skilled baker. Nice. Voilà. Nice. Well, the bakery, the bakery in Copenhagen, uh, they were like, François, it's good what you do, but it's not radical enough. We need more people to collect the bread and the, and the leftovers because we are shameful that we have all this bread and croissant <laughs> and they are organic and, no, and all this. And we don't want to give it to pigs and so on. We want to give it to human <laughs> beings. And, and, uh, and I was like, okay, ooh. but uh, it's difficult actually to find people to, to, to collect these things, you know? But anyway, and then she was like, hey, yeah. Uh, uh, I was living in Aarhus as well, 10 years, and it was difficult uh, here as well. <laughs> but never mind, it's starting to, uh, to kick up uh, slowly but safely. Anyways, then the bakery was like, you know what, let's go. Uh, and then she proposed this to me, like the owner. She was like, the bakery is open from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night or so. And when it's closed, then we can reopen, and then we will invite um, yeah, asylum seekers <coughs> and refugees to come and make events. And then they can uh, use the facilities of the bakery, of the bakery, the kitchen, make the Syrian food, make the whole Syrian uh, theme uh, with uh, paintings or like uh, pictures of uh, Syrian and uh, Syrian music and teaching people how to dance Syrian music. Cool. And uh, and then yeah, so and these are the guys like I approached to make agreements with to invite them to donate. So yeah, I think yeah, we should be very open uh, to uh, everybody <laughs> because you have no idea what's going on. And what's like when you plant seeds in people's head, yeah, beautiful flowers uh, will uh, come. Nice. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. So, yeah. And the project will uh, start up in Copenhagen. So, yeah. yeah. Well done. <laughs> we'll see. And what's the name of the project? Um, yeah, it was to, to. Yeah, it was Free Space, um, the name, because, yeah. And, it was, and the idea, the aim is to, br to break isolation between uh, foreigners uh, or refugees, asyl seekers, and Danes, yeah. but also Danes with Danes, because yeah, it seems or it is often the case that uh, even within the local uh, Aborigines uh, Viking uh, uh, hoods, <laughs> then there are some sometimes uh, people, uh, yeah, <laughs> like they don't even know each other. Uh, people don't know even their neighbors and so on. So it's also to break this isolation. So and food again uh, brings people together. So, and I think we should focus on, the, yeah, on these necessities of life, which brings us together. Yes. I think there's also an initiative in all. Yeah, I think that there was a uh, who wanted to talk. Oh, I just get excited. I think when I when I hear about like volunteers and needing more volunteers, and then they say, well, why can't we pay them with fair coins? 
and then they can but use it for a coin somewhere else. And they get like they get a, they get some sort of money for picking up the the bread, and then they can use that money in some other place. And it's an alternative currency that we've created, and we can use that. They can use that for I don't know, going and buying food at the at the Syrian market. Just anyway, that's what that's what's in my mind. Thanks for reminding me about the digital currency. I really want to say something about that. <laughs> I'm totally against uh, Bitcoin type of stuff. Um, I just think it's something, another, anything digital will end up being centralizedly controlled, period. <laughs> so uh, if you guys want to have some, I mean, I think, of course, probably using Bitcoin is better than using Visa. But if you look at the history of internet, you realize anything digital would not be a valid you know, form of currency. It can be centralized control. It can be turned on and off at will. It's just something very much masquerade as a decentralized movement 